Hi guys, welcome to the Tech, Cheese and Wine podcast. Here we talk all things technology, innovation and startups and how technology is shaping our world. And in our first episode, today we're discussing technology and gender-based violence. And I'm joined by two guests who are using technology to fight the gender-based violence. First, I'm joined by A.B. Musa, the CEO of AfriTech, who has recently launched his app, up to named AfriTech. SOS Alex. And I've got uh, Linnell Wilson, who is leading uh, NGBV campaign with, together with Empire uh, Partner Foundation. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you for hosting us on your show. Good, good. Thank you. Just to, to, to kick off, um, I want to relate to how this issue of GBV is impacting on many of us. Some eight weeks ago, my niece was stabbed 21 times. And then they cut, they slit her throat, and we lost her. She's just one of many people that have lost their lives through such violence. And today we just want to understand how technology can help many people, many victims, like if other people. May you please tell us what Africa, how Africa can be used to try and assist people who are facing such kind of violence? Well, firstly, Sam, I'm very sorry to hear about your personal story. Uh, it uh, is a shocking uh, reality of our life and our thoughts and prayers are for you and your family at this difficult time. Um, so gender-based violence is a pandemic, as is often referred to, which has been around for too long. Yeah. It should never have been there in the first place, but it's been around for too long. And as AfriTech, we uh, try to find technological solutions to various societal ills. Yeah. One of them being uh, gender-based violence. But what we did is we actually developed a safety app. And one of the branches within safety we decided to focus on was gender-based violence. So in essence, to answer your question as to how someone could do it in terms of having a call to action, mm -hmm. the app has a panic button within the app, which actually has a specific gender-based violence button and there's pre-populated messages which we were given in consultation with various gender-based violence organizations. So that's the one option where you press that panic and that can then go to an infinite number of circle members. Yeah. Circle members are family and friends. So in your niece's case, by example, let's just say you were part of her circle and she panicked. Yeah. You, amongst others, would have received that panic as a push notification with a live location as to where uh, she was. Yeah. So that's one piece of the big puzzle of dealing with gender-based violence. What yeah. we've added to this um, uh, app is a independent panic button. And that's because often it's not easily accessible to open an app and to press a panic within an app. And this uh, panic button is then paired with the app when you initially uh, set it up. And in the same principle, that if you had to panic using the panic button, it would go to the circle members who are part of your circle. Mm. And again, with the live location of the panic. So it's really just one uh, tool or one piece in a big puzzle that helps to try and uh, have some level of intervention uh, mm. and some level of, and you know, in these situations, time is critical. Technology is a disruptor. Mm. So if we can marry, marry the two, in terms of making it efficient time-wise for some level of response and awareness, and secondly, uh, for disrupting this uh, terrible scourge that's in our society. And is there a cost to this app? Because people would want to know. Is there a cost? Yeah. So the the basic version, which is a circ uh, for your circle, mm -hmm. uh, is something that we're giving away for free. Mm -hmm. And over time, uh, what our vision is, and that's why we were delighted to partner with Empire Partner Foundation and NGO, um, is to actually then target the CSI funding for corporates. Yeah. I think, and we don't want necessarily the biggest corporates, we don't mind even individuals or uh, big corporates at all levels. We believe that this is something that we all need to collaborate mm -hmm. uh, to come together and find a solution. So that will be our vision, but for now we are funding it, we are distributing it for free in terms of the basic version, which is your circle, yeah. and that can be an infinite number of people. Uh, and then over time, we plan to, uh, well, we, are pa we have part of the Empire Partner Foundation to now over time engage with corporates mm -hmm. and individuals. We bring a pack together. And the benefit of that is that uh, Empire Partner Foundation is a Section 18 registered 
uh, NGO. So it, it has the ability of giving the Section 18 tax benefit as well. So it's a business efficient uh, mm -hmm. way of doing it. And at the same time, uh, is part of a very important cause that affects us, everyone's lives, no matter what ethnicity, whether, no matter what income bracket. This is a society sickness that we really need to deal with. Awesome. And you know, you were at the launch, and as an activist, what's your view about technology and fighting this scourge of gender based violence? How do you see Africa working in your space? I think that we have to try to leverage technology in order to solve this. This is a crisis that we're in. And the problem itself is so complex that we need multiple different things to come together. And we sincerely believe that tech could be a big part of solving it. Um, we know it's not going to be the be all and end all. There are many groups on the ground in communities that are doing excellent work. Um, and actually what we're trying to do is work with them um, to collaborate, to really figure out how we can you know, your story is so heart-wrenching, Sam, and, and you know, my heart breaks every time I hear one of these stories, um, that we're all, I think, just, just moved to action to try to figure out what we can all do to try to make a difference. How can we make each, each, each week, each, each month, each year, have less of these stories being told? Mm -hmm. um, and if we can use the, this app that Af AfriTech has, has created, um, as, a, as a safety and security tool, as an alert, as an intervention, when you do feel unsafe, when you need support from those around you, your circle is accessible on this app. Mm -hmm. You can call for help, you can call for action, and hopefully it, it can be an intervention in some of these, these terrible situations that women across South Africa are finding themselves in every single day. Please tell us a bit more about your campaign and how you guys are using the AfriTech app as well. Well, the app is available, and as AB just described, uh, we're trying to onboard and make it accessible to as many communities across South Africa as possible. The app is obviously with smartphone access, but then there's the devices that are also available. There's other wearable technology like watches, which are also available. Um, the idea is that everybody has access to this tool. And I think when we sit down and we have meetings with potential partners, corporates or government, I think that there is, um, you know, there is an inspiration, I think, to probably come in and partner with us and help fund this so that no individual woman or vulnerable group in South Africa, uh, the person using the app, the user, does not have to fund the usage of the tool. And how has been the reaction from the communities that we have engaged? You know, we just did, uh, last week we were in Shosunguve, we did something with, with Tswane City, we heard from communities there, we, we you know, I shared the app, we, 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 everybody downloaded to try to figure out how they can use it. We listened and we heard some stories about the things that are happening in that township. Um, and some of the problems, you know, there were other stakeholders in the group government, SAPS and so forth, um, but it wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. Um, every single day, more people still had stories. We had to hear horrible stories of, you know, we know that that neighbor that lives across the road has, has raped another young girl in our community. One of the, the women stood up and, and told the story and nothing has happened. He's still there, we all know there. Um, our, our young kids in the school girls are too afraid to walk down to the shop, uh, which is next door to that house. So the community is aware, right? And, and that's how, in most part, we see these things panning out. Your neighbor and the community is often aware of what's going on when it comes to GBV um, in that community. How can we empower them with a tool, which could be this app, to actually alert the police, alert um, more security services, or whatever's needed to just prevent the situation from escalating in some cases. So yeah, to answer your question, the feedback from community-based organizations that we've engaged with, and there've been so many, you know, we try to reach out to as many as possible every single day. We're reaching out to a few more that we just see or, or have activities to see, one, can we get some feedback on how the app can be used as a successful tool? And so far the feedback has been overwhelmingly wow, this could be a game changer. Mm -hmm. um, and then secondly, just to see how we can roll it out to everybody in their network to make sure that everybody that needs it has access to it. Oh, great, great. And uh, coming back to you, Abby, um, considering how important this app is and the challenge the country is facing, 
do you think there's an appreciation from the public sector side guys appreciating how technology can be used to try and help them solve the current problems? So I think uh, more and more uh, the awareness is getting stronger. Um, I think COVID uh, became a catalyst for more people to adopt technology. So there wasn't a, a level of adoption and COVID accelerated that. I mean, I know of elderly people who would never have downloaded an app and now are ordering groceries online using an app. Um, so I think that the, that the appreciation and the, uh, what can I say, the adoption of technology has been catapulted. So I'm not saying COVID is a good thing, but maybe there's some level of silver lining. Um, with every uh, part of life, it can be used for constructive and destructive purposes. So technology, if used constructively, can have a domino uh, and multiply impact. And I think just to, to add on to uh, what Nanel was saying is that the idea is also the psychological empowerment. So lots of victims are mentally broken. And as part of trying, because there's obviously physical abuse, but there's also emotional and other abuse. Yeah. And, and I think the idea is to start giving them one further tool, which will have a psychological benefit for them, that they now have something else to be able to bring to people's attention because often they feel very stuck, they feel they don't know who to engage with. And in that moment of abuse, they really are in a very compromised position. So if, because it doesn't only have to be the victim, it can be someone witnessing this that can send out the alert, whether it's another family member, maybe it's a child that's witnessing this, they can send out the alert. And I think the importance of that and, and the reason why there's obviously the security, there's the SAP, but just empowering your circle. If you have your next door neighbor mm -hmm. and you having an arrangement for any safety situation where when you hit that panic, yeah. they get alerted or whatever, that's the closest person to you. Yeah. That response time is, you can't compare. So if we're able to empower communities and the example that Nanal gave where they know who these perpetrators are and once people start getting involved, and start saying, we know who you are, we know what you're doing is wrong, because a lot of these uh, perpetrators of these acts are actually cowards. Mm -hmm. um, they would create this public facade of being one person, and there's a different person behind closed doors. And it's about exposing them and saying, we know who you really are, yeah. and empowering the victims to be able to take action using technology. And, and so uh, I think that's, we, we've never, convey this as the silver bullet, yeah. but it's certainly one piece of a puzzle. So the adoption in terms of society, in terms of public sector, in terms of the awareness has been growing by the day. And more and more people are far more tech savvy uh, than mm -hmm. we ever anticipated. Yeah, and, and you said the, um, the AfriTech uh, Let app is more than just um, a tool for, for GB. Can you explain the other usage of the app? So uh, there's multiple security features. So obviously there's safety, which is for crime. There's also uh, um, medical, and there's also a breakdown uh, feature. So uh, and, the, and, and within the app, you also store your information, which is your cell number, which is uh, we have GBVF resources, which is uh, what educational resources, what is GBVF, because sometimes people don't even know they're victims. Yeah. And so it's an educational a portal and then we have a directory of all different NGOs that are involved in helping GBVF so you can do a shortcut dial from, uh, from within the app uh, even when a victim panics because they've stored the number you don't have to look for the number you can do a quick short dial we have vehicle you can fill in your vehicle registration details so if we think you're in a crime situation that your car has been taken or you're hijacked at least, you know, we don't, we don't know each other's car registration numbers off by heart or car tracking. So you store that information and when you hit the panic, your circle has access. Time is always critical in a crime situation. And the more information you have, the quicker you can act with information, which then helps to hopefully uh, alleviate or diffuse a situation that could go really out of hand and could be worse. And how do people access Africa? The, the app. So the app is available on the Google Store, on the Apple Store, and on the Huawei Store. It's Afri Dash Tech Alert. And once you download it, it's a very simple process to download it. But within our uh, website and uh, within the app itself, um, there's a tutorial section which has each of the features of the app, both in written form and a narrated video clip. 
So it's as user friendly as possible. It, you can go through each video and each of the features that are, they are outlined as we add more features all the time. We just update a new video. Um, but there's already like about, I think, about 13 or 14 videos that are already on there with all the different features from how to get started to all the different uh, benefits that you can use using the app. Lovely. Um, and maybe lastly, from you, Ninel, can you tell us more about your campaign going forward? What you guess, what's coming up from the campaign? Um, I think it's just everything more of what we've already started doing. So we've started engaging communities across South Africa. We've started engaging, you know, from, you know, uh, Black Duke movement in Aldo's to, um, you know, like I said, even in Pretoria. Uh, we're trying to make sure that we have, um, you know, we've consulted with communities about how this app can be used and how we can get more people on board if it's useful to them. Um, I think we also are, you know, engaging with various government departments. Um, and we're engaging with, you know, there is a movement um, and a stance that's been taken from a lot of corporates in South Africa, realizing how this is affecting not just, you know, their own families, but even their staff members and just the community at large. And they want to get involved and they want to stand for campaigns that I think are going to end um, GBVF. Um, so hopefully we can continue to get some support from, from those kind of, of entities that are aligned with what we're trying to do. The goal is to reduce GBVF in South Africa and to end it. Yeah. We want it to be a relic of the past. And can you just tell us a bit about your partnership with the EPF? Well, the Empire Partner Foundation, um, obviously their, their, their mission is to use technology to try to solve various challenges across communities. And under the pillar of safety and security, this is obviously the number one thing on the agenda. This is, this is crisis mode. Uh, the reports, the statistics, the prevalence of GBVF in South Africa is just insane um, and so this is one of the focus points and that's how um, Empire Partner Foundation or the reason why it's partnering with AfriTech on the app um, to see how this can be used um, under safety and security of all women, vulnerable groups, um, LGBT groups in South Africa. Thank you guys for joining me today. Much appreciate your time. Hopefully we'll continue engaging uh, sometime very soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Sam. Sam. Yeah, thanks, thanks for so having much. us. Yeah. Thanks.